Hey guys, my name is Vishwas and welcome to this video on the modern JavaScript learning path in 2020. A few days ago, I published the React learning path, which most of you found to be useful. So I figured I would do the same for modern JavaScript as well. If you're interested in the React learning path, make sure to check that out. Now JavaScript is essential if you want to be a front-end dev or even a back-end dev working on Node. When I started learning JavaScript, I had no clue where to start. I struggled to get a big picture of the various concepts that were present in JavaScript. And because of this unknown factor, JavaScript seemed like this huge mountain I could never climb. So in this video, I want to provide a learning path for anyone who is starting with JavaScript in 2020. I call it modern JavaScript because new features are added every year that usually tend to get left out in the older tutorials you might have been watching. Also, this is my take on the learning path and is by no means an exhaustive list of every single concept in JavaScript. However, having worked with JavaScript for a few years now, I feel I can help you get started in the right direction. Let's begin. I've broken down the learning path into four sections. Let's start with the first section, which is the fundamentals of JavaScript. Now this section is for you if you are a complete beginner to JavaScript. You need to start by learning how to run JavaScript. You could use the script tag in an HTML file, link an external file, or even run in the browser console. But the first step is to learn how to run the code you write. Personally, I recommend an HTML file with a script tag and a console log statement that says hello world. Once you learn to run your code, you can get started with different concepts. The first concept to learn is about variables. Variables let you store data. In JavaScript though, there are a few nuances that you need to learn which differ from variables in other programming languages. Start by learning about variable declarations. You can declare variables with var, let, or the const keyword. Then learn about the concept of scope when it comes to variables. You have global scope, function scope, and block scope. Another important concept is that of variable hoisting. Although var, let, and const declarations are all hoisted, you learn that only var declarations are also initialized with undefined. This lets you use a var declared variable even before it is declared. Let and const declarations, however, throw a reference under a similar situation. Once you have a good understanding of variables, you then move on to data types and data structures. What you have to keep in mind is that JavaScript is a loosely typed and dynamic language. So variables in JavaScript are not directly associated with any particular value type. Any variable can be assigned values of all types. The latest specification defines nine data types. Six of them are primitive types that can be checked using the type of operator. We have undefined, boolean, number, big int, string, and symbol. We then have null, which is a special primitive type. We then have object, which is not a data type, but a structural type with which we can construct other data structures. And finally, we have function. Function is not a data structure, but it does answer the type of operator and hence made it into this list. Like any other language, JavaScript also has a few built-in data structures that we can make use of. We learn about arrays, map and weak map, set and weak set, and of course, the date object. A proper understanding of these will definitely help you write better code. Once you understand the different data types, the next topic to focus on is type conversion. 
When writing code, you'll find yourself having to convert data from one type to the other. You can convert it yourself using a few methods that are available like to string, to boolean, and so on. This is called explicit type conversion. On the other hand, there is also implicit type conversion where JavaScript itself will automatically convert the type to be able to run the code we have written. This has both advantages and drawbacks, but type conversion is definitely a topic to read about in JavaScript. The next beginner topic is about equality. You must understand the difference between double equals and triple equals in JavaScript. This is typically the cause of a lot of bugs when you're starting out with JavaScript. The next few set of topics is common to other programming languages, so I'm going to quickly go over them. We have loops like while, do while, and for. We of course have the break and continue keywords that go hand in hand. And when it comes to iteration again, we have two more, which is for in and for off. The next topic is about control flow, which again is nothing new. You have if else, switch, and the try catch throw statements for error handling. Next, we have expressions and operators. Here, you're going to learn about the different operators like assignment, arithmetic, logical, conditional, and so on. The last fundamental topic to learn is about functions. Start by understanding the difference between function declarations and function expressions. Then understand how to call the function and learn about function parameters and arguments. When dealing with arguments, learning about destructuring and the rest operator, which were introduced in ES6, is also a good thing. Then learn about scope when it comes to functions. How variables declared inside a function are not accessible in the global scope. However, there is an exception and that is declaring a variable without the var keyword. This again can introduce a lot of bugs, so make sure you take care of that. Finally, learn about arrow functions that offer a more concise syntax to write functions in JavaScript. If you've made it this far, that is awesome. Unfortunately, if you are a JavaScript developer, just the fundamentals are not sufficient enough to clear an interview. You have to know at a surface level at the minimum the advanced topics as well. So let's move on to the second section. The second section focuses on learning advanced topics in JavaScript. You're going to start from where you left off in the fundamentals, which is about functions and scope. You will now learn about scope when dealing with nested functions, about lexical scoping, about immediately invoked function expressions, and the revealing module pattern. Once you have a good understanding of scope, you can then move on to the concept of closures. You will understand that a closure gives you access to an outer function's scope from an inner function. Once you understand closures, a good tool to have in your pocket is function currying. It is one of those advanced techniques of working with functions that could definitely benefit you when writing code. Next, we have the all important yet so confusing topic in JavaScript, which is the this keyword. You learn that this is basically the execution context and introduces sort of a dynamic scope in the sense that you can call the same function with different values of this keyword. You learn how to determine the value of this keyword using five simple rules. The rules are implicit binding, explicit binding, new binding, lexical binding, and default binding. They correspond to how you invoke a function. Once you understand these rules, all your confusion about this keyword will be cleared. Something that goes hand in hand with this keyword is the concept of prototype. You learn that every function in JavaScript has an object called prototype, 
which allows you to have shareable methods when creating instances of a function. You'll then learn about inheritance in JavaScript, which is possible because of the prototype and the prototype chain. Next, you can learn about ES6 classes, which is pretty much a syntactical sugar around functions and prototypes. You'll then move on to the concept of iterators and generators. Next, you will learn about event loop in JavaScript. If you ask me, every single JavaScript developer must know about the event loop in JavaScript. It is what will help you create a mental model about the other advanced concepts and is key to understand how the code you write will execute. The next topic to understand is asynchronous JavaScript. This knowledge is especially required when you're making the transition from a junior dev to a senior dev role. First, you learn about the traditional methods JavaScript has available for running code asynchronously. Set timeout to run code after a set time or set interval to run code at regular intervals of time. Next, you learn about callback functions, which are basically functions passed into other functions as arguments and are invoked after some operation has been completed by the parent function. You will learn about the drawbacks and about callback hell, which will introduce you the concept of promises. Promises are a comparatively new feature that allows you to defer further actions until after the previous action has completed. For example, wait till data is fetched from an API and then perform some action on the data received. Finally, you'll learn about async functions and the await operator, which makes chaining promises simpler and easier to read. The last advanced topic you'd want to learn is about the module system in JavaScript. You will learn how we can split JavaScript programs into separate modules that can be imported when needed. You learn about module systems like CommonJS and ES modules, how to import and export modules, and also the distinction between default and named exports. With that, we come to the end of the advanced section in JavaScript. The third section deals with client-side web APIs. Now these are topics you need to study along with the fundamentals and the advanced topics. However, I've created this as a separate section to let you know that these APIs are not part of the JavaScript language itself. Rather, they're built on top of the core JavaScript language. First, we have the DOM. When writing web pages and apps, one of the most common things you'll want to do is manipulate web documents in some way. This is usually done by using the document object model, which is DOM for short, and has nothing to do with DOM from Fast and Furious. DOM is a set of APIs for controlling HTML and styling information that makes heavy use of the document object. This is something you should learn along with the fundamentals. Next, we have XHR and Fetch, which are APIs dealing with fetching data from a server. Learn this along with the advanced topics, especially async JavaScript. The third set of APIs deal with client storage. Modern web browsers have several different technologies that allow you to store data related to websites and retrieve it when necessary, allowing you to persist data long-term. You'll get to learn about cookies, local and session storage, index DB, and so on. The remaining two, which are APIs related to audio video and drawing graphics, I would not recommend with the initial learning path. However, if your work entails something to do with them, then definitely go for it. All right, that is the third section, client-side web APIs. Let's now take a look at the last section, which is to do with tooling and miscellaneous. There are a few tools that help you with your development and are especially required when working with a team. You'll need to learn about linters. Linters are tools that check through your code and tell you about any errors that are present, 
what error types they are, and what code lines they're present on. ESLint, which is highly configurable, is the recommended JavaScript linter to learn about. Next, we have code formatters. Code formatters are somewhat related to linters, except that rather than point out errors in your code, they usually tend to make sure your code is formatted correctly and according to your style rules. Ideally, it will also automatically fix any errors that are found. Next up is bundlers, which are tools that get your code ready for production. They aim at optimizing your builds, making them as small as possible before being uploaded to the server. You can learn about Webpack, Rollup, or Parcel. Now, a nice to have tool in your arsenal is TypeScript. TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript, which compiles down to JavaScript that browsers can understand. With TypeScript, you get the benefit of not only writing your code with the latest features, but you get to add types to your code. This static type checking can save you from countless hours of debugging code and help you identify bugs that otherwise would have been found only at runtime. So it is something that I highly recommend you at least get started with once you're done with the other sections. With that, we come to the end of this learning path. From here, there are a few paths you could take. You could travel the road of front-end with libraries like React, Vue, Angular, or Svelte, or even travel the road of back-end with Node.js and more recently, Dino. But this pretty much is my take on the modern JavaScript learning path in 2020. For me, this big picture is what I would have liked when starting with JavaScript. Hopefully, you like it as well. Thank you guys for watching. And if you found the video useful, please leave a like and share the video with your friends and colleagues. If you would like to go the extra mile and support the channel, I now have a Patreon link, which I will leave in the description down below.